In the ancient Indian history, few tales are as compelling and tragic as that of Ajatasattu, the son of King Bimbisara who would later ascend to the throne of Magadha. His story is one of ambition, betrayal, and ultimately, redemption, a cautionary tale that has echoed through the centuries, offering profound lessons on the nature of power, karma, and the human condition. Ajatasattu was born into a world of privilege and promise. As the son of King Bimbisara, one of the most powerful monarchs of his time, he was destined for greatness from the moment of his birth. The Kingdom of Magadha, located in what is now the modern-day Indian state of Bihar, was a thriving center of culture, commerce, and political influence. Under Bimbisara's rule, it had grown to become one of the most formidable states in the region. The young prince's life was not without its complications. From an early age, Ajatasattu was said to be of a restless and ambitious nature, traits that would later prove to be both his greatest strength and his ultimate downfall. As he grew older, his desire for power began to consume him, setting the stage for a series of events that would forever alter the course of Magadan history. The turning point in Ajatasattu's life came when he encountered Devadatta, a cousin of the Buddha who had become disillusioned with the Buddha's teachings and sought to create his own sect. Devadatta, known for his charisma and persuasive abilities, saw in the young prince an opportunity to advance his own agenda. He began to whisper in Ajatasattu's ear, planting seeds of discontent and ambition. Why wait for your father to die? Devadatta reportedly asked the prince. Take the throne now, while you are young and strong. The kingdom needs a ruler in his prime, not an aging king whose best days are behind him. These words found fertile ground in Ajatasattu's mind, and he began to plot against his father. The once loving relationship between father and son deteriorated rapidly, poisoned by Ajatasattu's growing paranoia and lust for power. In a shocking act of filial impiety, Ajatasattu ordered his father's arrest and imprisonment. King Bimbisara, who had been a just and popular ruler, found himself confined to a dark and dismal cell. The cruelty of this act was compounded by Ajatasattu's orders that his father be denied food and water, effectively condemning him to a slow and painful death. It is said that Queen Vedihi, Ajatasattu's mother, attempted to smuggle food to her husband by hiding it in the folds of her clothes, but her efforts were ultimately in vain. As Bimbisara languished in his cell, Ajatasattu ascended to the throne of Magadha. His reign began in a cloud of controversy and fear, with many of the kingdom's nobles and citizens deeply troubled by the manner in which he had come to power. However, Ajatasattu proved to be a capable ruler in many respects, expanding Magadha's territory and influence through a series of military campaigns. One of Ajatasattu's most significant achievements was the defeat of the Vrygi Confederacy, a powerful alliance of states that had long resisted Magadan expansion. This victory solidified Magadha's position as the dominant power in the region and set the stage for the later emergence of the Mauryan Empire, which would go on to unite much of the Indian subcontinent. Despite these successes, Ajatasattu was haunted by the memory of his father and the weight of his own actions. The Buddhist texts speak of his growing remorse and the torment he experienced as he reflected on the gravity of his deeds. In the Samanyafala Sutta, we find a poignant account of Ajatasattu's meeting with the Buddha, where he seeks guidance and solace. The Sutta describes Ajatasattu approaching the Buddha with a heavy heart, confessing his crimes and seeking a way to alleviate his guilt. The Buddha, in his infinite wisdom, does not condemn Ajatasattu but instead offers him the teachings of the Dharma as a path to redemption. This encounter marks a turning point in Ajatasattu's life, setting him on a journey of spiritual transformation and self-reflection. Nichiren Daishonin, the 13th-century Japanese Buddhist priest who founded Nichiren Buddhism, often drew upon the story of Ajatasattu in his writings to illustrate the power of faith and the possibility of redemption. In one of his letters, Nichiren writes, Even Ajatasattu, who killed his father, was able to become a Buddha. How much more so, then, can ordinary people attain Buddhahood if they chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo? This passage highlights a central tenet of Nichiren's teachings, that all beings, regardless of their past actions, 
have the potential to attain enlightenment through sincere faith and practice. As Ajatasattu grappled with his guilt and sought to make amends for his past actions, he began to take a keen interest in the Buddha's teachings. He became a patron of the Buddhist Sangha, supporting the community of monks and nuns and helping to spread the Dharma throughout his kingdom. This shift in Ajatasattu's priorities marked a significant change in the religious and cultural landscape of Magadha. One of the most notable outcomes of Ajatasattu's newfound devotion to Buddhism was the convening of the first Buddhist council shortly after the Buddha's death. This council, held in Rajagaya, modern-day Rajgir, the capital of Magadha, was a landmark event in the history of Buddhism. It brought together hundreds of enlightened monks to recite and codify the Buddha's teachings, ensuring their preservation for future generations. Ajatasattu's support for this council was crucial, as he provided the necessary resources and protection for the monks to carry out their important work. This act of patronage can be seen as part of Ajatasattu's efforts to atone for his past misdeeds and to create a positive legacy that would outlive his reign. The shadow of his earlier crimes continued to loom over Ajatasattu's life. According to some accounts, he was eventually murdered by his own son, Udayabhadra, in a tragic repetition of the cycle of violence that had brought Ajatasattu to power. This grim end to Ajatasattu's life serves as a stark reminder of the Buddhist concept of karma, the idea that our actions have consequences that ripple out across time, affecting not only ourselves but those around us. The story of Ajatasattu resonates deeply with many of the themes found in Nichiren Buddhism. The emphasis on the transformative power of faith, the belief in the inherent Buddha nature of all beings, and the importance of taking responsibility for one's actions are all reflected in Ajatasattu's journey from troubled prince to repentant king. Daisaku Ikeda, a modern-day Nichiren Buddhist leader and philosopher, has written extensively on the lessons we can draw from Ajatasattu's life. In one of his essays, Akeda reflects, Ajatasattu's story reminds us that it is never too late to change the course of our lives. No matter how dark our past may be, we always have the opportunity to choose a brighter future. This is the essence of human revolution, the idea that by transforming ourselves, we can transform the world around us. Indeed, Ajatasattu's transformation from a power-hungry prince to a supporter of the Buddha's teachings serves as a powerful example of the potential for change that exists within each of us. His story challenges us to confront our own shortcomings and to strive for personal growth and spiritual development. As we reflect on the life of Ajatasattu, we are reminded of the complex nature of human beings and the often blurred lines between good and evil. His story is not simply one of a villain who sees the error of his ways, but rather a nuanced exploration of the human psyche, the corrupting influence of power, and the redemptive power of faith and remorse. In many ways, Ajatasattu's reign can be seen as a pivotal moment in the history of ancient India. His military conquests laid the groundwork for the later unification of much of the subcontinent under the Mauryan Empire while his support for Buddhism helped to establish it as a major religious and philosophical force in the region. Yet, these achievements are forever tainted by the means through which he came to power and the personal suffering he endured as a result of his actions. The legacy of Ajatasattu continues to resonate in Buddhist thought and practice to this day. His story serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of ethical conduct, the dangers of unchecked ambition, and the possibility of redemption even for those who have committed grave misdeeds. It challenges us to examine our own motivations and actions, and to strive for a life guided by wisdom and compassion rather than greed and self-interest. As we close this chapter on the life of Ajatasattu, we are left with a complex portrait of a man who was both a villain and a penitent, a destroyer and a builder. His story reminds us of the fundamental Buddhist truth that life is characterized by impermanence and change, and that our actions in each moment have the power to shape not only our own futures but the world around us. In the words of Nichiren Daishonin, if one lights a fire for others, one will brighten one's own way. Perhaps, in the end, this is the most enduring lesson of Ajatasattu's life, that even in our darkest moments, we have the capacity to change, to grow, and to illuminate the path for others.
It is a message of hope and redemption that continues to inspire and challenge us, echoing across the centuries from ancient Magadha to the present day.